In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a new online ordering outlet. Now, before we get into all the setups on the Jonas side, let's go onto the website and let's take a look at what your members would see when they do an order. So the first thing is they'll see all the online ordering outlets that you have available. At my club, we have the Halfway House, the Grill, the Golf Pro Shop, and a Wine and Groceries outlet. I'm going to do a test order in the Grill. As soon as you click on the Grill, the first thing that comes up is, how would you like to receive your order? So these order types that are listed in this menu, this is totally up to you, and we'll get into this once we get onto the setup side. But for me, I have curbside pickup, home delivery, to-go, poolside, or just regular pickup. And depending on which one I choose, let's say the curbside pickup, there can be a little question right beside it. So what is the make and model of the vehicle? If I choose poolside, it's going to say, please specify the location at the pool. So these questions are totally up to you, and you can customize that for your club. I'm going to say a curbside pickup and I'm going to enter in the make and model of my vehicle, the Jonas Mobile. And then when would you like to receive your order, either right now or sometime in the future? If I say in the future, I can click on that and choose future dates and times. I'm going to choose today and I'm going to adjust my time. So I'll click on the drop down and I'll order it for, let's say, 5 p.m. Once you've chosen that, click continue. And then now here's our menu. So in the menu, there's different menu groups. I have beverages, entrees, appetizers, and you can have this either collapsed by default where all the menu groups are collapsed, or you can have it expanded by default. That's totally up to you. So for your member, they're gonna pick an item. They're gonna see a picture of that item and maybe a short little description up there as well. And then if you have mandatory prep options, just like the temperature of the steak, you can choose those and any other sides that you want to choose as well. So I'm going to add that to my cart. You can continue choosing items if you'd like to, or you can go right to the checkout screen. So right here we have an icon for a cart with one item in it. We'll click on that, and this is our checkout screen. So it gives you a subtotal of everything that you owe. Uh, you can increase the quantity at this point. The only thing to pay attention to there is if I do increase the quantity, it's going to order an exact duplicate of this item. So if you'd like to change the prep options around, you'd have to go back to the menu and restart there. And then if there's any extra notes that you want to add, you can certainly add those notes in. Okay, once you've entered any sort of notes that you like, you can submit the order. And just like that, my request is completed. So now that we've seen what the website looks like, let's go into Jonas and we'll take a look at all the setups and how to create this at your club. Now back on the Jonas side, to set this up, we're going to go into point of sale, system setup, and you should see setup online ordering outlets in your menu. So we'll click into there. If you are creating this for the first time, you're going to hit set up another outlet menu code. I'm going to go into one that I already have created, let's say the grill. And then if you are setting this up for the first time, just enter your code in there and your description. This description is what you will see in your list. In terms of what the member will see on the website, that is determined by this online label. So that is what your member would see. Once you've input that, you have to attach this online ordering outlet to a sales area uh, and a partition if you have partitions. So that you can select right there. This field right here for the display order, this really only comes into play if you have multiple online ordering outlets. You can choose which one shows up first in your list. Below there, we have the image folder. Now this is the folder where all of your images are located. Uh, and this has to be a UNC path. If you're not sure what that is, essentially it is a path right from your server and then all the folders after that. So it can't be a map directory, just like that pop-up message says right below my mouse. And right below there, this is the image for this specific outlet. Now when it comes to these images, uh, they have to be either a JPEG or a PNG file. And it should be 150 by 200 megapixels or a 16 by 9 ratio. Okay, so that's the picture of my outlet. Uh, moving on to the other options down below, uh, the first flag here is for the orders go directly to printers. So this is probably the most important one in terms of how this module works. If this flag is on and your member orders something online, it will go directly to the kitchen printers and it'll print right away, right at that time. So if you'd like the module to work that way, all you need to do is turn that flag on. And then you need to choose a user ID that this uh, ticket gets created under. So typically what we do is we choose, or we would create a new user ID called online or online orders, and that's where all the tickets will get created under. 
So that's one option for you. If you don't want the orders to go directly to the printers right away, you can turn that flag off, in which case all the orders will go into the online ordering queue. So before we take a look at what the queue looks like, one thing I definitely would set up if you have that flag off is this order emailed to section right there. And what this is, is you can enter multiple emails in here. Uh, and whenever something gets sent to the queue, it lets that person know that something did get sent to the queue. So if you want to enter in all of your servers, servers email addresses and then flag them as active, whoever's working that day, that's one way you can do it. Or if you have some sort of a club email that's always on a main computer, you can just enter that email in. But these people, as long as they're marked as active, they will get an email letting them know that something went into the queue. So let's take a look at the queue and what that would look like, and then we'll come back to the other settings. The online ordering queue is going to be set up under point of sale, chip processing, and then we have the online ordering queue. So as soon as you go in there, you would select your online ordering outlet, let's say the grill. And then you have three tabs, one for all of your pending orders, one's for all of the chit created slash order sent, and then an all folder. Okay, so we'll go into the pending one right now, and there's the order from our test order on the website. And so there's my requested date and requested time. And these are the dates and times that I received the order. And then there's the member number and member name, uh, the order type, curbside pickup, and then any sort of notes that they added as well. So that's the make and model of the vehicle. And then we'll see in a second what the other notes are as well. So for me as a server, as soon as I see this in the queue, I'm going to go ahead and process it right now. So I can click on that. And then I get more details in here. So same thing up top, I have my order type, phone number, time received, member. I have a summary of their order right here. And then any sort of notes down below. So now that I've reviewed this order, I can determine whether I want to view this in the point of sale, view and send the order to the kitchen, or just create the chit and send the order. I'm gonna go ahead and view in the point of sale. Now this order opens up in the point of sale for me and I can see everything to do with this order. I can see the requested date and time, the order type, the make and model of the vehicle, and any sort of notes as well. Now going back to the online ordering outlet, the other flags in here are do not display the price if you don't want to show any prices online, restrict if over credit limit. So if you do set a credit limit for any of your members and they've hit that credit limit, they won't be able to order online. Uh, the menu group defaults, so do you want those menu groups to be expanded by default or collapsed by default? Now, if you do have the app, I would probably suggest to collapse your menus by default. Uh, if you don't, then expanded should be just fine. Uh, you can suppress the online notes fields. If you don't want your members to be able to input notes online, you can suppress that whole notes section. The last part of this is the allow ordering ahead. So do you want your members to be able to order ahead for a future date or a future time? If you do, just flag that on and then say, how many days in advance would you like your members to be able to order? OK, and then, of course, you will be using the queue if that's the case. So then when you are using the queue, how many days do you want to keep those chits in the queue for? So do you want to be able to go back and see all those old orders? If so, how many days do you want to keep those chits in there? So those are the main settings on the main screen here. But there's a few more things to set up on the right hand side. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the order type setup. On the screen, we have a couple different order types. You can use as many of these as you'd like. That's totally up to you. But the order types that are available to your members are curbside, delivery, to go, on premise, pickup, or you can add another one for eat in. Now, depending on which order types you have active, you can certainly change the description. So instead of it saying curbside, I have curbside pickup. Or instead of delivery, I put home delivery. So you can adjust that description on your own if you'd like. And then with that description, you can have that extra field right beside it on the website to ask for more information. So for curbside pickup, I ask my members for the make and model of the vehicle. Okay, right beside there, and the last thing on the screen is the order prep time in minutes. So this is approximately how many minutes it will take you to create this order. And what this refers to is when your members order ahead and they select a time that they want to order, the very first time available will be this many minutes ahead of time. So if it's 1 p.m. and I order curbside pickup, the earliest available time that I can order that for will be 1.30. After that, you're going to have to go into the scheduling feature over here. So just click on scheduling. 
and the screen pops up. So if you haven't set your schedule before, you're going to have to click this new schedule button. Uh, I'm going to go into one that I already have created and I'll go into my master schedule. So I'll click on this one. The first field over here is the display online. This is the date range in which your menus will be displayed online and your members can see them. And then we also have the scheduling date range and that is when your members can actually use the module during this date range. Okay, the description of your schedule is completely up to you. And then there's three different schedule types. There's a master schedule, an override, and a closed day. So for me, this is my master schedule. This is, these are my default hours for the year. And so this is when I'm open to and from and for what days of the week. And you can add as many different lines there as you'd like. Where this might change is if there's a holiday coming up or if the online ordering outlet is closed for some reason, you can always go back to this main screen here, add a new schedule. And then what you can do is you can flag it as an override. And so the date ranges and the times in here would override your master schedule and those would be your new hours. Or if you are closed for a certain day, you can flag it as a closed day. And then the date range and times that you're closed, you would enter in there and that would override your master schedule as well. The next thing to set up in here is the menu group setup. So these are all your menus that are available online. Now if we go into there, these are your menu groups. So I'm going to choose one, let's say appetizers. In this screen, this description is what you would see in your list and the online label, this is what your member would see. So for the items that are included in this appetizers group, we can go up into the item detail setup. Once you're in this section, you can click add new item if you want to add items to this menu. I'm going to click into one that I already have set up. Let's say the house salad. In here, we have the image that we're going to use for this item. Now you don't have to have an image in there, but of course it looks a lot better if you do. The online label, that's what your member would see. And you can certainly add a short description in there for this item if you'd like. Now, the one thing I would pay attention to in here is this prep option menu code. Uh, typically only your servers would see this, but now since it's available online, your members will see this as well. So to double check these selections and make sure it's okay for your members to see, click on the prep design setup. And this is your prep menu. So just as a refresher, the first two fields in there are for the description. The third one is for the added dollar amount. So for me to add chicken to a salad, it's an extra dollar fifty. And then we have the prep item there as well. Now I would double check the minimum and maximum number of selections in here as well. And those are set under options. Once you set up all your menus, you can go into the menu display order. And in here, this is just a really easy way to move things around. If you want to move entire groups around, you can certainly click and drag the entire group and move your appetizers up. Or if there's any items within a certain group, you can move those items around within that group. So now that we've set up our online ordering outlet, there's just a few more things to double check and a few more things that you may want to set up on your side. So one of those things is in our menu design, there's a couple buttons you may want to add to your screen. So let's go into the quick setup menu design, and then we'll choose our settlement menu. Okay, in this menu, there are two buttons highlighted in red there that you may want to add to your screen. The first one is for the order notification. So if you want to add this to your screen, this is under the functions list right here for order notification. And what this does is whenever an order is ready for pickup, uh, you can click that button and that would send a notification to your member, letting them know that the order is ready. Now there's just a few settings in there. If we click on that button, you can see that you can send an email or a push notification to your member. So flag on whichever one you want to send out. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to prompt for the member email address either always, which is what I would recommend, or only if it's not on file. The other button you may want to add in here is the email chit button. If the member doesn't want a hard copy of the chit, you can certainly click on this button and that would email out a copy of the chit to that member. Now, one of the last things you'll have to set up for this module are the JML parameters. If you haven't done this before, you might need a little bit of help from your IT. But essentially, any kind of emailing you do from Jonas, you have to set up these JML parameters first. So let's go into System Admin, System Setup, JML Parameters. Once you're in there, choose your company. And then for the form type, you might need to scroll down a little bit. We're looking at two options here, the email employee online ordering and the email order notification. So depending on which one you want to set up in there, just click on that option. 
And then for the mail client, you'll have to flip that to SMTP. And then this is what your IT might have to input. You'll need the SMTP server name, the default subject for those emails, the from name and the from address. And then you'll probably have to go into the authentication tab and enter in the outgoing mail port, the login name and password for that email. The last thing to double check before you can go live with this module is under point of sale, system admin and terminal setup. As soon as you go in there, you'll get a list of all of your terminal IDs. Now for this module to work, all the orders are sent from the website to the server at the club and then either to the kitchen printers or to the queue. So since, since everything goes through the server, uh, here at Jonas, the server should always be set as terminal ID T0. Okay, so double check in your list and see if T0 is set up in this list. If it is, that's potentially okay, but what we don't want is T0 to be used as a regular point of sale terminal. So you might just need to go around to the different terminals at your club and see if anyone is set up as T0. If it is, you'll have to change that. Uh, only the server should be set as T0. Now the other thing, if you're one of the clubs that are set up to print directly to the kitchen printers, since everything is going to your server and then to the kitchen printers, you'll have to make sure that the server can see those kitchen printers and can print to the kitchen okay.